one heifer. Eleanor's bull too. He's going somewhere else. Here we go. Here we go. Right, let's get to work. So <sighs> good, <Yeah>, buddy. <laughs> Kate, after the day. Thor, after the day. what are you doing? You can you get some smiles today? Hey, Thor, you get some smiles. There we go. Here, get some smiles. It's cold today. Yes, it is. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yes. Hey, guys, Dusty Becker, Cross Timbers Bison, and welcome back to our channel. Got the wife today. We are gonna make some changes and then what we're doing is the wife and I are going to attempt to catch some of our yearlings as some of you may know we are in the transition of moving some of our bison from the original place right the nostalgic old silos uh, here at the Lynch place we are going to move our bison to the Ponderosa and so this is kind of, not the beginning phase, but one of the phases of it. It's kind of a cold, chilly morning, so excuse me for having my hood up. But we've got two Texas yearlings. When we bought the Texas herd in 2021, there were four or five calves in that group. Well, two of the calves are right here, but they're not calves anymore. They're yearlings now, and so they're about to be two years old. And then there's three yearlings in here that we actually raised. So. We're going to try to get them up here in this corral. We've got to get them out of this, this one acre lot here, about a one acre size lot, and see if we can get them loaded up in a trailer and take them to the Ponderosa, where they'll be mixed in with the other groups of yearlings, and then we'll go from there. So let's see if they'll come in here first. That's the first step, is open this gate, and sometimes we can open this run right here, which is kind of nice because they'll come in here and Kevin's got some grass that he planted for I think some winter rye and some other stuff so if we can get them their attention get them to come in here we can hopefully shut the gate on them and then it'll be time to go through our loadout which is right here where all this stuff starts and running down the alley lane into the tub when you catch them all right Yes, it is chilly. You can throw it that way. May have to open this one just to get the, let them in their attention. Now they're not gonna you're gonna have to open that gate probably and let them come in here and graze to actually be able to catch them because they know what's going on here huh let's open this back and just swing that open let them come in here and let them come in here and eat some of this. They want to come in here. We just have to get back and let them. They're too interested, but they know that we'll uh, try to catch them. See, she's freaking out already. So Marissa and I came in the barn, let them come in. So they're making their way in here. 
All right, so all five are now in here, which is good. But um, the problem is, is you want them occupied so that, uh, so let them come in here, do a little sniff around stuff, and, and then hopefully they'll run down that lane and uh, we'll have time to go shut them in on the gate. Um, once they figure out they can go to a new place, that'll draw some interest to them. They may run in and out, but once they do that, then we can run and shut the gate. It'll give us time and room to do that. So. One heifer. Seriously. She went through there instead of through here with the rest of them. She went that way, so. <sighs> oh, I have to wait until she comes back around. Well, because she's out here by herself, I don't know if I can get her back in without all of them. It's kind of hard sometimes when it's just one. Yeah, she's gonna wanna go around and hang out with them. <sighs> Why did you screw this up? You really made this more difficult, hon. She may go back in there. Nope. May have to run the rest of them out to get her back in. Let's see. It's okay. Go with your friends. Pop. We'll just let them graze, and then uh, I don't want to get them riled up while we're hooking up the trailer. So we'll just we'll get hook up to the trailer. We'll get her backed up, and then we'll start pushing because I don't want them. Just let them be calm for now, and then we'll worry about them whenever we get ready to load. Because you don't want to overstress them right now. Let them graze a little bit and hang out, and then then we can push them. Okay. All right, so let's uh, hook up the trailer, and then we're gonna pull in the pin with uh, Eleanor's bull. I'll tell you about Eleanor's bull too. He's uh, going somewhere else, so um, we'll do that, and then we'll get it backed up with the help of the wife, and then we'll uh, load them up, and we'll head to the Ponderosa. Okay, honey. You open that gate for me, please. Yep. Thank you. So you may watch him. Yeah, so 
Go ahead and open this sliding gate. There you go. And then, let's get all of this green grass. So here's our kind of our uh, gauntlet, I call it, essentially. But this is our tub here uh, that we also use to load out. You see me load out before, so we'll load out there with the bison. Run through the tub, they go around. They have a holding stall there, holding stall there where they're weighed, and then go through the squeeze chute head gate, and then them back out, and we send them around. But this is basically where we kind of funnel them down to into the alley here. You got a sliding gate, a sliding gate here, and then this tub opens up. Works just like that. Marissa can get out. Then we bump this right here. So when they run down, come down the lane into this, into here. So this gate right here distinguishes what you want to do. It can go that way or obviously where it is. So if we weren't loading out and just working them, it'd swing that way and you use the tub to push them. But in this case, we got the gate open and we have just a sliding gate there. So they'll run all the way up to the front of the trailer, which gives you time to run from the tub there and have a sliding gate. I've loaded animals by myself quite a few times and because it's a 24 foot long trailer they like to run in that dark place in there and they like to stop and hide and stay there and kind of settle and then it gives me time to go and hit the sliding gate and this is a this is a benefit of having sliding gates when you work bison instead of it open and closing a swing gate a swing gate would open and close this way you can pull all the way up to a loadout like this where it's nice and tight and there's no gaps for them to get into and you just basically once they run through there you just slide a gate instead of swinging a gate shut it's a lot safer all right so what we'll do is let me open this let me open this here oh, i think needs some wd on it okay so we'll leave this open you need to come down the alley and come hang out with me. Will you, can you, never mind, I need it. I got it. So that one's open now. So you got sliding gate, sliding gate, and then the tub. These sliding gates are very, very handy. So Marissa will be there. We're gonna swing this open. So now, there's a little, it's not the best, but back behind it, we can move bison in here where some of those bulls are. You can see one right there. Um, so now this sheeted gate here keeps them from wanting to go that way. And so it kind of funnels them here. Ideally, you still want uh, something solid there so they don't think that they can go back in there, you know, shut off some of that light. And so when they come down, you can see them right there. They'll come down here and keep running and it's a long run and it's worked out for us where they run all the way to the front of the that trailer so it's this is kind of worked out their only hiccup that we've ever had really and something we're going to do before we work our animals here is we're going to put up more of that conveyor belting which is this right here that you see we need to put more up right here so that when they're coming this way they don't see this light we want them to sort of funnel it into there um, so this really could honestly be what I say blacked out sort of or, or rubber sheets all the way to there to match that side. So what we'll do is we'll go down there. We'll get these um, ran out of that lane. We'll shut a gate, gate, and then they'll be in this box right here. This our very first traditional old um, corral area and then we'll run them through there sometimes they may just take off running so we'll see how it goes um it's nice got marissa to help and uh, we'll get them coming through hopefully through the into the trailer so it's nice to have the wife here help out. all right so i'll go down there and grab them They're already worked up. You know, 
know something's happening. Come on, critters. Come on. You guys been in here eating all this luscious grass. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get to work. I'll shut this. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Here we go. chill so we'll put up a divider gate so they're not all crammed in one one spot I don't want them fighting there is a feisty heifer in there he's gonna get all jazzed up here here so Eleanor's bull is what we're looking at here he's about to be three years old oh he's gonna get all jazzed up come over to this side Anytime I haul animals, uh, Kevin taught me this, I always have a little bit of extra backup <laughs> just in case. So always put a chain around everything just in case something happens, this comes loose. It never should any of this come loose, but we always have a chain here on this gate and the side gate. Just in case, don't want any bison roaming along the highway. So. So Eleanor's bull here, and uh, so I was going to take him to the Missouri sale, but I, I had some people reach out to me and uh, want to purchase him. So Eleanor's bull is sold, and uh, I'm very excited. He's uh, all works out and everything. He's going to go to Indiana uh, to um, and some new bison producers that I've been talking to and um, trying to help out a little bit. So... <laughs> He's, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, when we separated him and, and started doing this with him and starting to put him with another bull, I, uh, I just really liked the way he turned out. I, <laughs> honestly, it's going to be my first breed bull to actually sell um, because Eleanor had him in 20, uh, and so this year he'll be, obviously, like I said, three. But um, I kind of wanted to be able to sell my first breeding bull, and he turned out to be a really nice, what I thought was a breeding bull, instead of using in our processing uh, side of things that we do um, for meat and jerky and those things. He's calm-mannered. He gets jazzed up just because I pulled the trailer in here. Um, but he'll turn out to be, I think, a really good breeding bull, and he acts a lot like his mom and his dad. He'll be good for some new producers, uh, and I'm glad he's, his genetics are going somewhere else. And so uh, when that day comes, we'll talk more about that whenever um, the new owners come to pick him up. I'm going to keep him for a while because they're finishing their fences, and they're working on the corral system. So I don't think it'll be later this summer whenever uh, the owners are going to be able to come down and pick him up. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for him to go to a new place and... You know, do what he's meant to do and, and um, hopefully be a good breeding bull and you know, spread his genetics and things like that. So, uh, anyways, that's the story of uh, Eleanor's bull. We never gave him a name. We just call him Eleanor's bull. So, he's funny and uh, I think he'll be great for the new owner. So, we're going to take these animals over to the Ponderosa and get them taken care of. So, he's just curious right now. He's jazzed up because he doesn't know what's going on. He's got a nice set of horns on him too and he's really pretty. He's got a lot of black underneath him like his dad. It's Eleanor and Dunbar's bull and uh, Eleanor's first calf ever. It's right here. It's fun to watch him grow up. It's been fun. Hi. 
I don't know why. Yeah. say most places most places don't have uh, animals in with their loadout areas <laughs> so yeah we try to use, utilize all of the space we can and Eleanor's bull happens to be in this space so here's what it is That's how it goes. you definitely have to be careful when you pull through the gate so the fact that you're with me today thanks I'm, thanks I'm help. all right let's go Right, guys this is our first pasture release we're gonna do it right now um, first pasture release uh, for me and um, for the cross timbers by syringe so let's let these five yearling heifers out All right, guys, we just did our first pasture release, and I'm uh, a little nervous, but uh, I feel a little bit better now. Um, one of the reasons that I did it this way, and I decided to do it this way, was because if you buy animals, if you're a first-time bison owner or, or just any time being a bison rancher, if you buy animals, I always bring them back to a home base. And what I call that home base is basically... Uh, your strong corral, your strong support system, like a pipe fence or something like that, um, where you can bring those animals into and you know where they can get food and water and you let them know about that and they kind of get acclimated to their new home. And you can do that for a couple of weeks actually is what we like to do. But this go around, um, I felt comfortable pulling the trailer in here into pasture two which is where the Canada, my Wolverine bison, and my South Dakota bison uh, have been in. And they're all yearlings. Uh, and this is basically the Haas group is what this is. And uh, so there's 22 of them in here, and they're still down there running around right now chasing each other. But uh, I felt comfortable with a pasture release on this situation, and that's mainly because these five yearling heifers that Marissa and I caught this morning and brought over here 
are the five that we've raised. And three of those, like I said earlier, are were born at Mom and Kevin's with the Dunbar herd. Two of them are part of my that original Texas group that I got in 2021. And uh, two of those were heifer calves. And so what we like to do is keep them all at the same age. We kind of like to keep them in that group. Uh, you can see in the back back there, that is the big Joe herd. Uh, those are all full grown adults. And then here in this pasture, you have basically, you've got some 22, 23 month old females, including Haas as the only bull in this group. And so those are all yearlings that we're keeping together. And so that's why I felt comfortable with it. I know places like the Inner Tribal Buffalo Council, uh, you see these pasture releases um, and uh, I follow those guys along and they get animals from the National Park Service and sometimes they'll just pull out to some new land, uh, some tribal land uh, that they have these pr the deals with and uh, they let those animals out there. And I, I love seeing those pasture releases. And some of my friends, I've, I watched them do pasture releases when they're, when they're moving uh, you know, heifers around or bulls around, uh, they're doing these pasture releases. If you're bringing animals home from a bigger ranch or from a, a sale and you don't know what their program's like and you don't know a whole lot about their background or how much land they've been roaming on and all those things, that's why we bring them to uh, a pen and to a home base corral. You reduce the risk of them going through a, uh, 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 instead of a fence, you know, they're dealing with a tough corral system. Thank you guys for watching. This is Bison Ranching. See you guys soon. Thank you.